Okay, this question really has nothing to do with this section. Just an interesting problem I came across. And um, I think you should start looking at problems like this. They're, they're really something you would not expect to see on an exam, uh, an algebra exam. And of course, this is a course in calculus, but something that can't go hurt to go back and look at what you've learned in algebra. So we're asked to solve an equation. And the equation we're asked to solve is this equation over here. It's a nested root. And it's equal to x raised to uh, the a root of x. So first thing I do is point out that <coughs> a simple solution would just be 1. Right? What do you mean by that? If you just plug in 1, what do you get? You get root 1, 1, or a lot of 1s, right? 1 root 1. And if you simplified that, you would just get 1 equals 1, and that certainly works. That's what's known as a trivial solution to the problem, by the way. All right, so it could be the only one. I'm not saying otherwise, but the um, you know you, you may want to wonder is there another solution or other solutions to the problem. So what I recommend you do is you know kind of look at it and try to rewrite it. So the first thing I did over here was I just I kind of write that you know the square root of x is really just x to the one half, and then then this thing over here is this whole thing to the one half, and then this whole thing over here is this thing to the one half, and you got a lot of powers there to deal with. And just using the rules of exponents, all right? So the first thing I'd recommend you do is, you know, start from the inside and work your way out, all right? But the first thing is write it as an exponential problem, and it is. So I'm going to work from the inside, and the first thing I notice is over here, and I've got a simple rule for that. And what's that going to be? a to the n times a to the m is a to the n plus m. Whoops. So you just add them together. You add m, the, the uh, m and n together. Put that down for you. So really I have x to the 1 times x to the 1 half, and that's going to equal x 1 plus 1 half, which is going to be x to the 3 halves. All right, let me outline where that is. That's written for you right over here. The next rule I'm noticing is I'm looking at this x to the 3 halves raised to the half power. There's another rule I know from basic algebra. It's this one over here. That's a to the n times m. Let me do that. What do you get? x to the 3 halves the 1 half, which would be x to the, well, 3 halves times 1 half, which would be x to the 3 quarters. All right, let me show you that's written. That's right over here. All right, I'm, I'm back in a loop, and you say, when is it going to end? When I get to the end of it. But, um, you know, I've, I have x to, <coughs> x to the 1 times x to the 3 quarters now, and that's going to be x to the 7 quarters. All right? So, let me show you where that's written. That's written right over here. And last but not least, I got another one of these rules to use. And you got 7 quarters times a half, which is 7 eighths. All right. Now, someone says, does that make it any easier for me? Maybe, maybe not. This could make it actually worse. All right. One of the things you can make a mistake along the way and uh, lead yourself down a rabbit hole you want to go. But anyway, I, I'm, I'm expecting that I'll be able to solve the equation now. And the way I'm going to do that is I want to go through, remind you what you did, did in, uh, this is back in 19, is to get rid of the exponent, is take the natural log of both sides. So you would get 7 ace times the natural log of x. Well, before I proceed, I want to emphasize that x must be greater than or equal to, well, not actually greater than 0, because I don't want to do 0 to the 0 power. x greater than 0, positive number. All right, so I'm good with the logs, all right? And on the right-hand side, what would you get? You would get root x times the natural log of x, all right? Again, it may look worse to you, but I think what I want to do is get everything on the one side and then use the zero product rule. Let's put that down. So what do you get? 7 a's natural log of x minus the root of x natural log of x equals zero. I'm going to factor out a natural log. And you get 7 a's, let's see, minus the root of x equals 0. Zero product rule says state the factors equal to 0. So ln x equals 0. Or the other guy would be when 7 a's minus the root of x equals 0. Well, this is going to be easy to solve. This is just e to the 0, which is 1. By the way, we knew that <coughs> going in, but now we have another solution. And what's that going to be when 7 a's is equal to the root of x, or when x is equal to 49 over 64. So I'm going to say these are my two solutions of the problem, and we're using standard algebra to do that. All right, I want to emphasize that we, um, we read a key for you to look at it. 
Also emphasizing the key, there's certainly answers if you're just stabbing around for the answers. I also provide a graph though, and it's to help visualize the solutions or what I expect. All right, we'll say figure 24 on page 64. Let's take a look at that. This is the figure here, and let's just talk, <coughs> talk about it. And uh, we do have something over here. Let me make sure I'm looking at the right thing. The magenta curve. Okay, I see the magenta curve. I see the green curve. And I see two points of intersection. Let me just review what those points are. This point here, it's an actual point, is where x equals, well, I think we did that, didn't we? And what's that going to be? Uh, 4964. Yeah, 4964. And I'm also going to write the x down for you. And what's the x going to be? Let's see, 49 64 raised to the 7 ace. All right? And that's what that number is there. It's kind of an odd looking number. What's this point over here? It's 1, comma, 1. All right, and we're done. Thank you.